Hi everyone, today I'm going to give you a bit of a tip that's also more of like a methodology or a philosophical blender video. This is something that's popped up a few times in my workflow. I'm not sure if it's been spoken about much in the community, but it's basically like a deconstruction policy. What I mean is, recently I've been working on the ambient grunge node for Blender, which is my node for getting like procedural dirt effects, which can grow around an object of any shape because it's procedurally projected. The node itself was quite complicated in the way that it was all done in one big go which made it quite complex to expand upon so what i wanted to do was break the different functions down into a more modular layout so an example would be something more like this where we have like the mask coloring dust cleanup and then bump and then these would individually be able to be swapped out and expanded upon without necessarily interfering with the other functions but i've made some mistakes while doing this so here's a question for you if you had a super complex node like this how would you simplify it how would you break it down into to a section of modular nodes like this. Genuine question, because there are two main approaches that I can think of. Number one is build it again from scratch, this time with a new philosophy. So we build like the simplest versions of each of these and then we just add to them until it reaches a similar result. Or the deconstruction methodology, which is to actually take the literal content and then split it up. What you might not realize straight away is that there are a lot of parallels between this and modeling, but we can get onto that. Now, the reason why I want to make a video about this is because the actual quality of the end result will change drastically depending on what methodology you apply. So this is what the original grunge looks like on the right. But if I plug in the modular nodes, which are created from scratch, it looks quite different, as you can see here. Still a cool effect, but not as good, I would say, not as clean. This one feels much more kind of realistically like dirt in my mind. I thought I did it accurately. These were built from the ground up, so not deconstructed, but built fresh and new. But I'm confused. I don't know why the result is different. I thought all the scales were the same, all the procedural noises, etc. The way ambient occlusion feeds into the masks, but it's just not right. But this is exactly the layering that I wanted to do, so it's kind of disappointing. But then I thought to myself, wait, this isn't how I work. Why am I doing it this way? When I was recently working on the hex scatter project with Azra, they would hand me these extremely complex nodes for creating seamless materials from non-seamless textures. Part of my job was to deconstruct those nodes into what we called preamble versions, which this might be complicated. It effectively allowed you to have multiple versions of the material in one file. It's a technicality to do with referencing image texture nodes. Now I did that very successfully, applying the deconstruction methodology, where I effectively sat for hours, like actual hours, splitting apart all of the nodes that as he had done, identifying where things could be separated into different sub node groups and then doing that. So basically slicing up the inputs and outputs, turning it into a node, make sure everything connected properly afterwards. So what I've realized while starting to do this modularization of the ambient grunge node is, wait, that is what I should be doing. Because it's so complex, there are going to be subtle choices that I made in the past while working on this node that I don't remember while trying to recreate it from scratch. But those subtle choices already exist here and now in the final version. So two things, let's talk about that methodology and I want to talk about how this relates to modeling. Let me just make a quick note so I don't forget. Let me just flip a coin to see which section I'll start with. Okay, that's the modeling. So the way this relates to modeling is there's a very common scenario that people fall into when they start learning to model in 3D. They kind of have this visual vague idea of something they want to make. So let's take a spaceship as an example. Then they'll place a cube in the world and then they'll start kind of slicing away, making loop cuts, extruding, pulling faces around to try and nudge an already manifold shape into something that looks cool, like a spaceship, and then maybe adding extra kind of objects along the edge to make details. But this is very often a source of frustration. That is a very viable way to do artwork. In fact, there are lots of different approaches, but a lot of people early on find that they just can't get an object like a cube to look like the really hyper complex thing they have in their mind. There is a way around this. It's a slight methodology change. Some people find alternative ways of doing modeling in the same kind of vein are helpful. For example, sculpting an object if it's a hard surface one. You can sculpt and then build geometry around it, kind of like retopologizing, but going in it with the mindset that you're able to take kind of creative geometric liberties as you build a mesh around that sculpting shape. They just find that doing the pre-sculpting kind of helps them to turn the idea from mind to physical space, even if it takes a bit more work after the fact. But my methodology for something like that is a bit different. Instead of building from the outside in, like placing a cube and then trying to knock it into shape, instead, if you have trouble with that, try building from the inside out. 
out. Now, what do I mean by building from the inside out? It's a perspective shift. So rather than trying to see the whole thing in one go, don't build a spaceship build a walkway, build a pipe. A pipe doesn't have to be that complex. It can just be a cylinder. Once you have a pipe, build a network of pipes along a walkway. A walkway doesn't have to be complex, it just needs to be a line of planes. None of this has to be in extreme detail, just effectively build like a little map of what you would imagine the inside of the spaceship to be roughly like. Pipeway, walkway, stir, etc. Again, you could just totally block this out. If you were really wanted, just do it in cubes. What you're doing is you're just building a general substructure cloud if you like. But the more detail you add to that the better, with the reason being that the actual outside shape is the last thing you do. So rather than modeling from the outside in, where the outside shape is the first thing you do, building from the inside out is the last thing you do, even if it's what the camera mainly sees. By the time you get to the outside shape, you have a substructure which already gives you detail which you can expose when building the outside. Generally, what people find is that that looks way better than if they were building from the outside in from the first place. So let me explain that again in terms of a spaceship idea in a bit more detail, just in case anyone wants to actually do this. Instead of a pipe, maybe start from the energy source, like an engine or a fuel source, right? So fuel, put cylinders, where would engines go in relation to the fuel? Put like a curve between engine and fuel, doesn't have to be detailed. Put a plane like a walkway around engine or fuel depot where people inside might kind of walk around. Then put planes between these two things to say, okay, well, these are different levels, these are different floors. Maybe have like a few pipe and walkway sections between these planes. Now to make it kind of manifold, maybe you could put like a mesh, like a wireframe thing around those floors. So again, we're building from the inside out. So we've got a few floors, a few walkways, a few pipes, and a mesh covering it, and then just put panels, like solidified panels around that mesh structure. Maybe let kind of the engines poke through that. Do it in a planar faceted way, if you like, and you'll find that you've got a lot of stuff there to work with to build upon. The same thing with if you're modeling a gun, which is something that people doing hard surface tend to do a lot of. You might find that, again, modeling from a box downwards, a gun looks really stupid and basic. But if you actually just did the individual component, components and made variations on them, then you would find that by the time you actually came to doing the outside, there's so much substructure to work with that no matter kind of how you do the outside, it already looks good. There's a lot to expose if you wanted to. If you feel like you're missing detail, exposing a pre-made substructure is a little bit of a cheat in a way. And some people find that having a substructure already created, retopologizing, I suppose, around that substructure in open 3D space already gives them a mental guide, like a mental ruler for where to actually model something something more manifold. So connecting these two fields together, with modeling, you can model from the outside in or the inside out. I prefer doing the inside out. When it comes to doing node group stuff, we can modularize from the outside in, as it were. So basically building from scratch and trying to replicate, in which case I'm not getting the results I want. Or we can modularize it from the inside out, where we take what already exists in some form, we might call this the substructure, and I would then divide it up into a final result by then splitting these into node groups. Now, obviously, this is more deconstruction than creating something new. Deconstruction like this tends to lean a bit more into what I would describe as hacking, like the traditional idea of hacking. Imagining this was a circuit, and we've got wires and data moving back and forth. What we need to do is isolate the directionality of the data. So for example, if I was going to turn this into a node group, I want to know that the outputs are heading off to the right, and the inputs are heading in from the left, and that they're not going to be crossing over. So I need to make sure that the order of operations, as it were, is correct. For example, if this section was over here, that would be no good because the output is being used as an input behind. So part of my kind of deconstruction method is literally just to lay out the order and assess how node groups will finally and modularly be placed after the fact. And placing these sections into frames is actually a really good visual representation where a frame represents a node group in the higher layer of abstraction. What I also like to do here is just clean up the node links where possible to make it a bit easier. So we here this output is cycling around to an input so this would have to be before that let's clean up that link so this would be somewhere here these would have to move back that would have to be before there let me just deconstruct those links something like this node frame here normal details we see that its input comes from further back from this whole process and the output goes straight to the end so it's not actually interacting with the section here so it doesn't really matter which part of the process this node group goes into it would just be a separate one in our modular layout so we end up here so far with one two three four possible node groups and one parallel node group which can go alongside them now the deconstruction philosophy much like how modeling from the inside out may inspire you into new directions 
changes my original plan, because the original plan, making the modular from the beginning, ended up with just five layers that make sense. But when I'm deconstructing, I'm noticing one, two, three, four layers here, the four node groups, one parallel one, so not in a sequence, and possibly like one, two, and three other modular nodes. So it becomes more complex, because in the deconstruction process, I observe the substructure, and it gives me a new direction. Again, much like with modeling, you see a substructure, gives you a different direction than what you would have done from the outside in to start with. So that's just something that crossed my mind while working on the node recently. Just a bit of a revelation. I, you know, started working trying to recreate the node group from scratch. And then I thought, wait, that's not actually how I most effectively do my work. And it just goes to show that there's no one particular way to do any certain thing in 3D art and design. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, then please put a spaghetti or noodle related emoji in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. Obviously, because the node links are noodles. If you want to check out my blender tools, you can do so at curtishold.online slash store. We have functional add-ons and artistic resources for Blender users. And you can also support me on Patreon if you like, which supports a whole host of various projects, including development projects. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.